for those of you who don't know, I passed the first round for Citadel, and now we're on to the, the last round, which is three in a row, and I think there's a behavior out for that, so there's four. There are four more, Chad. Hey, wait a minute. Most of you guys aren't subscribed right now, so please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button for notifications. You randomly choose questions. No, I choose like targeted stuff, you know? I think this is like a, a Citadel type question or a hedge fund type question. Hedge funds love to ask Q stuff. Oh, this question is a uh, design circular Q. So it's basically talking about if you put stuff in, when you reach the max of the in, the, the array, it should go back to the beginning. So it's like circular. So we need initialize the object. We need a front, which gets the front item. I have to solve this without using a built-in data structure. I have to make it myself. So for this question, I think there's one thing you need to like notice. Index modulo by size equal to new index. You need to use this modulo. Let's say you have an array of one, two, three, four, five, and you want to put an element at this number five, right? This the, the index of number five is four. This is the fourth element. If you start from zero, zero, one, two, three, four. When you're at five and you want to put another element, you reach the end of this array. And in order to put it at the beginning, you need to do, use the index of this five, which is four, modulo the size, which is five, and that's going to equal zero. So the index is four. Wait, is this correct? <laughs> 4 modulo 5 is 4. It's not a 0. Oh, it's it's plus 1. You need to do plus 1. So you need to do plus 1 here. So you need to do plus 1 modulo size. So 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 modulo 5 is 0. You guys know what modulo are is you get the remainder. So 5 minus 5 is 0. So there's no remainder. So it's just 0. Once you understand this, I think this question becomes much more easier. Usually there's always like a trick. I feel like in these type of questions. And this is the trick here. So we're going to initialize. This is the constructor in Python. And we're going to initialize uh, some bullshit here which is a queue so this is the circular queue we have to implement so we're going to initialize this with just zero and times k so it's going to be an array of size k what else do we need in this class we also need i think a rear pointer which is just going to start from zero and we also need a front point pointer which is going to start from zero right so these two pointers are going to tell us where where we are in the array so i feel like i'm like, i'm interview i'm being interviewed by you guys so to insert an element i think we first need to check if the queue is full if self is full returns true we just we're just gonna return false because we don't want to put stuff in if it's already full and this is the function that we're going to implement here later so to put something in here this rear pointer is supposed to be pointing at the next available spot so what we're going to do is self dot view at the position of self dot rear we're going to put this new value and then we can increment self dot rear rear plus equals to one so we put the new element in we incremented the size we also incremented the, the end pointer, the tail pointer. I think that's it. We just return true. Okay, but we'll keep this for now. So since I use is full here, we're gonna implement is full right away. So in order to know if it's full or not, we just we just check the size. So return true if self.size is equal to self.max uh, max size else false. That's it. We got the mod. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do the mod. Uh, Self.rear is gonna equal to yeah, so this bullshit i was talking about in the beginning i forgot to use it you have to use it so the rear is going to be self dot rear plus one and then you mod it by the self dot max size uh, not max size yes max size no not max no, size yeah, yeah my bad oh yeah i think this is it i think this is it you increment the rear by one and then you mod you mod it by the size so let's say if we were at we we're at four this becomes five and then it becomes zero since you modded by five. Okay, perfect. We got it. We got it. We got it. You will fail your interview if your interviewer notices you're reading chat. <laughs> nah, they won't, bro. They will never notice. I'm a professional. Don't read chat, bro. I'm not reading chat. It just, you guys, you slipped into the corner of my eye. So the DQ, we have to first check if it's empty. So if it is empty, we just return false. Otherwise, we take away something from the Q by moving the front pointer forward. So self.front is going to equal to self.front plus one modulo self.size, right? I think we just need to move the pointer forward. Self.size, we minus one for the size, and then we can just return true. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. And then for the front method, to get the first element, we can just return self.q.front. 
self dot front, which is the first element. This is the pointer pointing to the first element. And we do this if it's not empty. So if self dot is empty, uh, we return minus one. And the rear is the same thing. If self is empty, return minus one. Otherwise, return self dot q self dot rear self dot rear minus one actually. Okay, and then we implement the is empty function, which is just if se return self dot size equals to zero. I think we have a chat. What do you think, chat? What do you think? No. Oh, I forgot, dude. The first time I did this question, I took this into account. I took this into account, bro. Fucking division by zero. Wait a second. This is not self dot size. It needs to be max size. No, I'm stupid. In the interview, I don't know where I would raise the exception because if K is, if max size is zero, right? If K is equal to zero, then I should just raise, raise exception. But I think raising exceptions in the constructor is really bad. So what I would actually do is check during the NQ and DQ. And if self dot max size is zero, then I would raise the uh, sizes zero or some shit. Run code. We got it. Let's go, baby. We're going to submit this. Completion streak. Consistency is key. See you tomorrow. Boy, I am not done. Bro, I'm sweating, man. That was too hard. Okay, uh, I kind of cheated because I already did this question before. <laughs> now do leak code hard? Bro. Okay, I have a list of stuff I want to do, okay? Okay, this question is a Citadel tagged one. Reorganize strings. I guess we do this one. I never did this one before. How to make woman happy? That's a NP complete, bro. To make a woman happy, you have to do the opposite of everything they say. That's a joke. That was a, that was a joke. All right. 767 reorganized string. Giving a string S, rearrange the characters of S. So let's say you have A, A, B. This is incorrect because A and A are the same and they're consecutive. So if you change the B in the middle, then they are no longer consecutive. So right off, right off the bat, this seems like some sort of combination problem. Right? Maybe combination, probably some recursion in this, maybe some DP. I guess it's not combination or more so permutation. You place the most common character and then the second and then the, and then the third. That kind of makes sense. So let's say we have a count equals to collections. Dot. So now we have the count of every letter in this string. Let's see if A is the most common one, right? And we just, we put A first and then we put the, the second most common one. Let's say we can put B and then we put the most common one again. I think I'm gonna just sort it, bro, F it. What if I just put this in an array? I, I just put this in an array and we sort it by the number of times it appears. Array equals to this or I and count for each letter and each count inside of number inside this count dictionary. I'll put them inside this array. So array dot append. And this is a tuple letter with the number. And then we can sort this array with respect to the second element, which is the number of I, number of times it appears. So now we have we have the, the element that appears the most frequent is at the end of the array. And then at this point, we have the result array. We're going to go over for I in res the resulting array. We're going to put, hmm. Okay, so how do I put stuff in by order? I want the most highest count in first. All right, fine, bro. I raised my shit. We're going to use heap. Okay, let me write down the idea. The idea is to use, to put the most frequent characters, then the second. Do this, we can use a heap. A heap to get a max element. Only could put the current max back in after having popped again. These are the two main ideas of this question. So we're gonna sort this heapify, heappq.heapify the array. And we have to put the number negative since we want this to be a max heap. Now we want to up from the heap, right? So while array frequency letter is gonna be heappq.heappop from array once we get this two these two things what do we do we want to put them in our answer array so answer equals or just result equals this and then result we're going to append this letter and then we're going to do frequency is going to minus equals to one before we put this back in and we're not we're actually not going to put this back in we're going to store them so store frequency store letter equals to zero for this 
we're gonna do store frequency is gonna equal to frequency and store letter gonna equal to this letter but when do we put them in i think if these two are non-zero uh if store frequency is not zero then we want to put it put this letter in so heap pq dot heap push store frequency with stored letter so by popping from the array we can get the frequency and the letter we append the letter the answer array and we minus the frequency and then we store the frequency and the letter again so that on the next iteration we can push them in let's i think there's some stuff wrong here let's run through like a quick example let's say we have a a b right so in the array we're gonna have a oh it's not gonna be minus it's gonna be plus since we're using minuses minus 2a with minus 1b when we pop from this we're gonna get the minus 2a when it's zero it's not gonna do the pushing it's gonna pop it and it's gonna put a into the result right array is gonna put a and then frequency is gonna become minus one instead and on the next iteration it's gonna put in minus one in a oh but now they have the same priority what if they have the same priority well let's say it gets the b and it puts in b it gets b it appends b and b becomes zero and then once it comes back if this is not zero it's gonna push it and since it's zero it's not gonna push the b in it's gonna get to a instead it's gonna append a a is gonna become zero and it's not gonna append a anymore but this is not empty it is empty this is zero is not gonna append it i think this works uh let's just print this result i want to see what it is a b i'm missing an a it's not putting the a back yeah, I think I can solve this in the next 10 minutes. It's fine. Okay, so we're missing the A at the end. Okay, so inside our heap is minus 1A and minus 1B. Oh, it's counting A only once. Interesting. So here's a problem. Oh, what the hell is this? How is this not an error? Equals plus. <laughs> this is not a... I thought it was equals positive one. I know what's wrong. I need something else to, de to determine the positions, the priorities, if it's the same. Because when it's a minus one and minus one, instead of putting B, it's putting A. I think we can do this by putting in an index. Because you're pushing before popping. You're absolutely correct. I am pushing before popping. So that means I'm pushing the minus one A in first before even popping the B. That's ridiculous. I should put it here. Are we good now? yo i think we got it okay now there's also a possibility of not possible return any possible re re rearrangement of s return empty string if it's not possible how do i know if it's not possible i need to do a second pass of the string and see if any of the strings letters are equal for i in range length of result i'm gonna check if if what if we're gonna start from one res i is equal to res i minus one then we're just gonna return impossible and then we can just return uh the string itself so we're gonna have to join the array into a string boom that's it chat okay what if this string is only one letter if it's one letter we just want to return directly right so if length of s is equal to one we're just gonna return s there's no problem what if it's two then this works Press submit instead of instead of run if you're so confident, bro. Chat, do you think do you think I can run this? Like I'll, I'll submit this. Do you think it's gonna work, bro? If this works, everyone in the chat needs to subscribe right now, bro. Okay, fuck it, let's go. Go. All right, never mind. So a is a minus three. Then it becomes minus two. A becomes minus one. And after appending the the last a, this is minus one and a. And when it comes back to this array, there's no way array is empty. So inside of the heap, it's going to be A and B, right? So it's going to be minus 3A and minus 1B. And we're going to pop first. We're going to append A, right? And frequency is going to become 2. And at this point, this is no longer in the heap. But we're going to push if it's 0, but it's not 0. It is 0, so we don't, we don't push it. And then we set this to minus 2 and A. And we come back. There's only B in the heap at this moment. Only B in the heap. Okay. We append B. B becomes zero. Then we push A into the back into the heap. Okay. B is no longer in the heap. And then stored becomes zero and B. We don't use this. 
On the next iteration, we pop A again, and then it becomes minus one. And then when we push it in, we don't push it in because B is zero. And then the stored frequency, oh, we don't put it back in. We don't put it back in. I think we can just add another if statement. If stored dot frequency is not zero, we just freaking add it. What are you guys talking about, chat? What are you guys talking about? And we have to do a while statement, actually. While stored frequency isn't zero, we, we must append. Append stored letter. We also have to do uh, stored frequency minus equals to one because it might be more than one left. There might, there might be more than one left. Actually, we don't have to do this because if this is the case, <laughs> we can we just return. If... If store frequency is is more than one, we just return nothing. If stored frequency is equal to one, we just append. I think, I think I got it, chat. I think I got it. This is it. This has to be it, chat. This has to be it. I'm spelling. <laughs> I'm spelling things wrong. Stored frequency. Yo, yo. <laughs> How? The store frequency here is one. It's one. Oh, it's minus one. It has to be minus one. We got it, shot. We got it. Let's go.